My name is Melania Miksiewicz. Ages ago, I was an EVS volunteer myself. It was so long ago that I will not even mention the year when it happened. <clears throat> Since then, uh, I've been also working for National Agency of Youth in Action program, then Erasmus Plus, and then Solidarity Corps, uh, all together uh, involved in the volunteering projects. Uh, since November 2020, I've been also responsible for a quality label process here in Polish NA. So uh, I have a quite extensive uh, experience in volunteering projects, but bear in mind from national agencies perspective, not from organization, uh, which is also something that I want to mention and bring up here on the very beginning, because, uh, you know, not complaining, but it was a tricky, tricky task to, to prepare a workshop for such a big group of, uh, as I understand, quite uh, and sometimes very much experienced organizations. Uh, not having organized uh, uh, projects by myself. Uh, this is first thing. And the other is that uh, I'm really happy and impressed to see such a big group of participants. It's, uh, it's really uh, very helpful to spread the information very quickly. But on the other hand, it's not so easy to make a workshop out uh, of 40 minutes and 45 participants. So uh, what I intend to do today with you is a short uh, presentations with some hints and remarks from national agencies perspectives uh, regarding the volunteering projects. Um, and I will try to make myself uh, short and concrete so that we have uh, few, at least a few minutes for short Q&A sessions uh, afterwards. Uh, I will start uh, by uh, referring to what was already been said by Barbara from uh, ESC Resource Center and coming back to the question posed by uh, Angela, uh, if I remember the name correctly, on the main session, what has changed, what, uh, what shifts uh, there were in the, between the, the old previous uh, programs and the current one. And if you, uh, if you remember, the answer was, of course, there was a shift in philosophy and, um, and in so to say priorities, because uh, in the previous programs, it was all about volunteer and all about learning process and experience. Now it's more on the uh, more about uh, local community, target groups and solidarity meant in this way that we are doing projects for someone, some people, some others, uh, other than, than only our organization. And uh, aside this shift, there are many, uh, many other uh, smaller shifts, uh, changes um, regarding the procedures, regarding what is what and what is important uh, in, the, in the new program. Basically, what you will also grasp from, uh, from the presentation from the other workshop led by Gosha on quality label, um, now the quality label becomes a centerpiece, a center uh, point of the, of the volunteering within the European Solidarity Corps, and the projects themselves become uh, something that is, uh, to put it uh, simply, a consequence of the, of the quality label. Before uh, we had this, it was the procedure of the quality label very simple yes or no, you applied for your quality label, you obtained it, and then together with your uh, partner organization in the, in the program country, together you prepare the project from the very beginning to the very end. But now the quality label is, is something that describes most of the activities that are being planned by the organization. And then the project itself, or as Barbara put it correctly, um, request for grant is a small form that merely describes uh, the number of volunteers and where you want to host them. 
So it is some simply very simplified and very automatic, and it also doesn't uh, go through this uh, assessment procedure. You, I know that you don't apply uh, on behalf of your organizations for projects, but I presume that you are very much aware of how it's been done in the national agencies. So <clears throat> since the, the application process is very, very simplified and quite automatic, uh, there are several aspects that can be missed, can be omitted, and my presentation is going to be about uh, them so that you keep them in mind while creating uh, your own initiatives uh, with the volunteers. Because simplifications on the application stage may dangerously lead to simplification in creating and preparing projects. And this is something that we don't want to happen. So without a further ado, uh, I will start now sharing the screen. Oh, one more thing. Uh, if I could ask you, it would be very, very helpful for me to wait with the questions put in chat box until the Q&A session starts so that we don't miss anything uh, in, in, in case uh, there are many questions and the chat goes on and I cannot really follow it when I'm talking, okay? So first me talking, then you writing on, or, or asking via microphone. If it's okay with you, I would very much appreciate. Uh, and now the screen sharing. Uh, I would also uh, please uh, let me know if my presentation is uh, is visible now for you. Yes, it is. Okay, great. It's also quite simple and and uh, with uh, some keywords uh, for you to remember. So so it would be more more listening to me than reading reading the slides. I don't like reading the slides myself, so this is how, it, how it's going to happen. Okay, so uh, this is uh, just a short reminder of how the volunteering projects work, uh, that we have this uh, frame, framework for projects uh, containing the volunteering activities can last uh, up to 24 months. And also, as Barbara said, we have two types of uh, volunteering activities individual lasting from two to 12 months uh, generally and in some special special cases uh, in projects involving young people with fewer opportunities those individual activities may last from two weeks uh, to two months and also teams volunteering uh, team volunteering volunteering teams uh, which are short-term activities uh, involving uh, larger groups of young people and the budgetary uh, uh, relations uh, have not much, uh, changed so much uh, comparing to the to the previous program. So all the costs the costs related to the preparation, organizations of the pro uh, projects uh, supporting the volunteer, also travel costs are covered uh, on equal terms as it was before. And also the organizations, as Barbara already presented, uh, interested in um, in uh, carrying out the volunteering projects, they are required to have um, something that is called a quality label, which is uh, basically, in, in, in simple words, a form of, form of certificate awarded either by national agency or SALTO uh, that confirms that the organizations who applied meets all the standards uh, expected uh, from them in relation to good quality volunteering projects as the program guide describes it. Uh, what uh, also be more developed by Maugosia in the second workshop, um, the quality label uh, is awarded for, for the whole duration of the, of the program, which means that from now until December, end of December 2027, once uh, the quality label is given its, uh, its own, uh, of course, uh, there will be possibilities to modify it because we are aware and also the, the Commission is aware that uh, the seven years is a very, very long period of time in terms of lifespan and activities of uh, NGOs. And NGOs are basically our, uh, our beneficiaries, our organizations who deal with uh, volunteering projects. There are three types of uh, this quality label for hosting 
which is something quite clear and not changed since uh, for the before, uh, between previous program and the current one, supporting organizations. In normal uh, language, it means sending organizations. This, this organization is re responsible for supporting, preparing the volunteer from their own country to be sent abroad to, uh, to the hosting organizations in other country. Then uh, to keep uh, in touch with the volunteers, support them during the project and also help with their reintegration after coming back home. And the new uh, new status, a novelty uh, in this program is the status of a lead organization. It is something that does not involve you because, uh, because this comes only to the organi to organizations from the program countries. Uh, this is the status that allows the organization to apply for funds to apply for projects and also certifies that this organization is capable of um, managing a bigger projects on their own. So this is something new and this is something that is going on right now. We have plenty of organizations who now apply for this quality, uh, quality label for lead organization because, because, fun fact, you have to have it in order to be, to be um, allowed to apply for money. And uh, as of today in Poland, there is not even a one organization who already has this type of quality label. Uh, keeping in mind that uh, the deadline for projects is 28th of May, so pretty soon, we are really, really on a very tight schedule uh, regarding the quality label application and then awarding process. Luckily, this, uh, this doesn't uh, directly concern you, but I think it is important that you that you also are aware how the process goes and what is required now, uh, especially that uh, since the program, the, the European Solidarity Corps uh, program for years 21, 27 has been announced, announced rather late. Uh, and now uh, after this short introduction, some remarks regarding the practical side of the volunteering projects from an ACE perspective, so from the perspective of the institution that doesn't do the projects on their own, but also uh, but grants the projects and helps supports the projects from afar uh, by supporting the beneficiaries, the organizations. <clears throat> First of all, this is something that, that really goes back to the very basics, but uh, the longer I work with the volunteering projects, the more clearly I see that uh, this, uh, this issue, this, uh, this um, topic uh, is somehow missed by many organizations, uh, which is the project life, life cycle. Uh, between the quality label holders, uh, between the volunteering organizations, uh, many of them have this approach that since I have the quality label and the activities, my proposal is described there. <clears throat> what I do on the, uh, between the first year of the quality label, second and so on, is only apply for the same type of, of activity without much... Uh, much, uh, not to say thinking about it, but without much deliberation. Uh, what we want to, to remember also as a partner organization in, the, in those bigger projects, we want to each project, each application be a independent, whole, complete being, <clears throat> meaning containing all the, the those basic stages of a project life cycle, where you, first of all, Think and prepare the activities. Then you, then you uh, realize them once the project is granted. Then before you close, then you evaluate what happened, where the go whether the goals and uh, the proposed results were achieved and to what extent. And then you close this, uh, cl close the project. That then you report to the national agency together with your lead organization with the coordinator, with basically everything what has happened in the project, whether it has been planned and expected or not expected at all, as we have the case now, where the many, many projects were uh, disturbed uh, very strongly by the COVID pandemics. 
this is also something that that we want you to to contain in your in your reports and then after the closing this the the, the first project we want you to keep all the experiences and the results of your evaluation and put it as a food for thoughts when thinking about and preparing the new next projects. So we see not only the continuation of activities as it was described in the quality label, but also development and uh, consideration what has happened, what has worked, what has been what needs to be changed in next projects in order to make them more efficient and more, more of a better, better quality. Uh, this uh, this picture is, is something that uh, was found on the internet. It's not an official uh, uh, scheme of uh, of the national ag agency of or of the program, but uh, I presume many of you uh, are very very well uh, familiar with the concept of the project life cycle. So bear it in mind and use it also while uh, designing next steps of your projects, next projects, ne next initiatives, because something. Many times, you know, I work in, in the national agency for many years, and um, there are many organizations whom I know for ages uh, who do exactly the same activities, at least they describe it like this on the application stage, uh, throughout many, many years. And when I see for the 10th time the same project, identical with the first one, where nothing has changed, uh, sometimes uh, I wonder myself, where is the where is the point? What is the meaning behind this project? If they still, after ten years, they have to do all the same, what are the results of the previous ones? Because there is this, this is something that is not visible anywhere. So this is the first very very uh, important, in my opinion, remark that I have to make. Uh, not knowing, of, uh, of course, your organizations, and I'm not saying that you that you miss it as well, but this is something that we see um, uh, that needs more and more consideration and paying attention to uh, while designing projects in general. Uh, also, uh, something that uh, referring to what Barbara said in her uh, presentation regarding the program itself, uh, this shift uh, from from uh, uh, Volunteer, volunteering centerism on uh, to the to the local community. This what is expressed by the solidarity activities, defined very differently and understood in, in many countries very differently. But uh, altogether, in the basic meaning, that we do something for some people who are outside outside organizations, whether they are our target target groups or uh, maybe uh, simply the local community where the organization is set. Uh, it doesn't matter, but the project needs to be very much grounded locally and needs to be visible locally. Uh, regardless the, the experience that volunteer may have working only inside the organization and have no, no interaction whatsoever with the local community, because this is the way they may also learn very much. This is not uh, how the project, how the activity should be designed in regard to the program guide of the U European Solidarity Corps. So then we have this, uh, this aspect of solidarity. Please remember that <laughs> volunteer is not this uh, golden center, this golden cow, as we say uh, sometimes ironically in, in Poland when talking about the projects. Uh, this is not the king or queen uh, of the of the project. This is person who comes to do some work to involve themselves in act actions. I'm targeted at local communities or other target groups, regardless how you define them. And the program priorities. This is something that I want to mention, even though uh, very shortly. Um, we can see this this shift also in the program philosophy, but but also I want to make uh, make it uh, more visible for you and and uh, maybe put some stress on it, uh, emphasis uh, on it as well. Um, many times I, I meet organizations which 
approach the project priorities in this way, uh, presenting this way of thinking that, okay, there are some priorities. Everybody knows that each project, uh, each program has a philosophy on its, uh, of its own. So how can I incorporate this, uh, these priorities? How can I uh, put them into, uh, into my, uh, my everyday uh, work of my organization? Um, we want to, to, to think a bit differently in other way, um, which means not only how can I use uh, those priorities uh, to benefit of my organization and to the local communities that I work with, but also how can I and my organization contribute to these priorities by carrying out uh, the projects in my organization. Uh, there are, uh, the priorities are very, very broad and very, uh, they, they differ from one another. And I presume that, uh, I imagine it is, uh, it is quite easy to find a certain angle or topic uh, covered by uh, one or other priority uh, that you can also uh, enrich by your activities. Uh, this uh, digital, digital transform, transformation and digital tools, I think we are very much fed up with them after, after the COVID years. Uh, and this is something that I want, don't want to dwell too much upon, but inclusion, uh, inclusion and, and um, involving people with, uh, with uh, disadvantaged uh, backgrounds or fewer opportunities, as we say, or uh, trying to uh, to make uh, our organizations a bit more environmental friendly is something that I can, uh, I imagine can be very well um, carried on regardless if it is a kindergarten organization, circus, or any type of, uh, any type of organization that we have in the projects and there are countless of them. Uh, <clears throat> so the priorities uh, and also uh, if you have certain ideas for the upcoming uh, activities in the next projects, please remember this annual priority for the year 2021 especially, which is the pre uh, prevention and promotion and support in the field of health. What stays behind it is al also on the first stage, uh, clearly COVID recovery and actions uh, taken up by, uh, by organization in order to Mm, to uh, to diminish a bit the damage made made by uh, by the pandemics on various levels. Uh, this is something that very very many of you, I presume, already do. Uh, but also uh, while preparing next projects, please uh, just consider it bringing up uh, mm, much more uh, visibly in in the in your applications. Please uh, bring in up because we already know that plenty of volunteers uh, were very much involved in helping, for example, uh, seniors who weren't allowed, uh, weren't able to uh, to leave their homes uh, in um, in such simple things as uh, shopping, going to the library, uh, any type of assistance that that seniors uh, at that time required or uh, for example, suing um, uh, those uh, protective masks uh, where there were uh, so, uh, such high demands and you couldn't really buy them in shops. Many volunteers uh, made those um, immediate actions to, uh, to, to, to prepare the, the masks for, for people. Uh, so I know that you have already uh, done that. May, may, maybe there are there are going to be some other activities connected to post-COVID reality that you plan. Please bring it up, bring it forward, because, uh, because this is also something that is very vivid and, and quite vital to the program. Um, also something that I want to mention, even though uh, you are also, again, not directly involved in this process, is um, the reporting phase of the project. Uh, this is going to be even more important than it was before, because again, I'm coming back to this, uh, to this information from Barbara and the, from, and the shift that I mentioned on, on the beginning of my presentation. Uh, the application stage uh, will be quite simplified and automatic, but the reporting stage, stage will, will not be. Uh, this means that uh, 
the money and the projects that are granted quite automatically without the uh, without uh, the assessment stage would be uh, will be afterwards quite uh, quite thorough, thoroughly checked uh, on the reporting stage by national agencies which also means that even though i know that many of you write their parts of the reports uh, but uh, on behalf of the of the coordinating organizations this will be even more uh, important uh, task now because the the application uh, applications will not be assessed but the reports will be and uh, this uh, this assessment uh, of the report may have an impact on the future uh, future grants uh, that the uh, organization will receive in coming years which means uh, that really really uh, um, please uh, remember of it please take your time while preparing your parts of the of the of the reports uh, for your activities uh, in close cooperation with your lead organization with this coordinating organizations who applied for money on your behalf um, and include all the vital information whether it's good or not so good because we are pretty we are people we have experience uh, with the projects and we are very much aware that if you plan to carry out the activity for a year or two years uh, they will 100 percent sure they, they will not um, not be exactly what you plan them and how you plan them because it is it is life simply so please include all the vital, real information, how the project went, what would happen, what happened not so well, what, what worked out, what didn't. Because this is something that, that shows that uh, you took, uh, took enough time and, and uh, work on the evaluation. And this gives us uh, insight on how you supposedly maybe uh, plan uh, to carry out your future actions, which is also something very, very important for us as, as uh, national agencies and other supporting bodies to see this continuation from the, from, from the starting point being the first project and the second one and how it goes, how the story develops. And also uh, what I want to, uh, what I want to uh, hear um, put uh, also quite much in emphasis on is the participants report. I know that at this stage it might seem as a mere technicality, but uh, I don't have, um, and also I don't have the, the, the concrete data, but from my experience, uh, maybe half of the volunteers fill up their, uh, their individual reports, uh, their participation reports. Uh, this is something that we have to really work on and we also on the on the trainings for the volunteers that uh, national agency organizes we also uh, pass this information on to volunteers themselves uh, not to forget to 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 prepare their own reports but it, it is also something that i want to ask you to remember uh, and these are the basic insights and then my thoughts on the on the how the uh, how the project um, should be maybe not done because uh, how to do a good project we can I, I guess we can do a week long um, training on this topic and still uh, it'll not, it will not answer all the questions but my insight on what might be useful for you might be important for you in face of changes between the first round of uh, European Solidarity Corps program 2018-2020 and the new program starting from 2021. Where can you find lead organization? Uh, once they apply for quality label and they get it, uh, they will be marked as lead organizations in the uh, European Solidarity Core database. So the same tool that you use to uh, look for organization, uh, organizations until now would be also useful for, uh, for finding leaders. Um, also at this point where the, as I said, uh, the applications process for the lead organization only has only started. So no, no organization I imagine in the whole Europe has 
has not re reached the status yet. Uh, the best option for now would be just to ask the organizations with whom you regularly cooperate with uh, carrying out the projects and ask them if they uh, intend to apply for this leader status uh, in the coming months or weeks. Uh, most of the, I can, I can speak only from uh, the Polish background, for, but uh, from what I know, uh, more than half organizations who apply for money uh, for Polish national agency on the regular basis already work on the elite quality label applications. So I expect uh, to receive uh, plenty of applications for leader status very soon. And I expect also the major, vast majority of these applications to be granted. Okay, we have questions. question from Dana. Hello, yes. Uh, my question is about inclusion support. Uh, to be honest, I didn't work with it uh, on my project before. So the question is like uh, for which uh, activities we can allocate it to. I saw an example just in, in a guide just about mentorship, but what else it can be, for example, for young people with geographical obstacles or some, some I don't know, economically is, it is quite obvious. We can help with buying some warm clothes if we take the project in Russia or some luggage, but what about others? Can you give maybe some examples? You know, this is, uh, there is a reason behind why the commission didn't, didn't limit or didn't set uh, precise examples uh, of uh, inclusion support in the program guide because from, uh, from the fact that person comes from, uh, let's say, uh, uh, financially, uh, from from a poor family, might stem very, very many consequences. First of all, is also, as you said, a lack of uh, proper clothes for the projects or luggage uh, for that instance, but uh, also many, uh, many other issues. Uh, for example, this person might uh, need some uh, stronger also linguistic support because they didn't have any access to, to foreign language courses uh, at home or something different is missing. So, you know, th these categories are quite, quite tricky and sometimes I would say dangerous because when you say uh, geographical uh, uh, difficulties, it may really mean uh, really mean um, different things. What I also what I always advise to organizations in, in this uh, aspect is to really talk with the volunteer because even if they don't tell you exactly what they need from talking you, with them, you will get the information because you observe, you see what might be missing, and you can offer this type of assistance that you see uh, that you see fit, and you can you you, you see that is necessary for this particular person. So I know this this doesn't answer your question directly because uh, uh, you know uh, no uh, extra equipment or no no specific costs have been mentioned, but think of it rather in the in this uh, in this broader aspect that if you see a person who is definitely missing something and you have this money, what can you offer them so that, so that uh, to make their participation in the project uh, more effective and more enriching experience and also uh, in terms of what you as an organization get from these volunteers. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, okay, so we have more questions in the chat. And uh, then Tuba also has a question. Okay, so now a question for, from Jana uh, regarding the team volunteering. Is it also targeting primary youth with fewer opportunities uh, as short-term volunteering or is it open for all, all people under 30? Uh, I would say it's uh, more like this type of uh, hands-on action, um, short-term activities. Uh, they don't have to necessarily involve young people with fewer opportunities, uh, as it is contrary to this uh, short-term individual volunteering. Short-term individual volunteering is designed with, uh, with uh, target being um, people with this uh, disadvantaged background, so young people fewer opportunities, whereas the team volunteering is not. It's open to anyone. 
And uh, uh, another question from Natya. I have a question regarding the volunteering of people with disabilities. May the accompanying person be from volunteers country of origin or someone found by the receiving organization? I would say this definitely uh, depends on the first of all uh, type of disability and whether this, this volunteer would be able to travel on their own. Uh, from country to country, because when the travel assistance is uh, necessary, uh, the project is also able to finance this uh, this stage of the of the uh, of the project being the journey. But it may also very well happen that the volunteer can travel on their own. But there are some different uh, difficulties uh, difficulties that they meet uh, on the spot in the organization or in the surroundings. So I would say both ways are possible. Okay, then Tuba, you were waiting to ask your question. Uh, thank you. Uh, so I'm from Norway, as you can see. Now uh, Norway became a partner country, not a fully signed the contract. And then um, when we want to have a volunteers in Norway, then we need to find, isn't it? Like lead organizations can actually apply fundings for us. And before we just apply, send one application form to our national agency and then apply for volunteers from four different countries, for example, uh, through our uh, partners. But now do we need to have four different applications in four different countries and these uh, organizations will apply for Norway? Um, so I... I cannot really tell you 100% sure because uh, really the Norwegian case is a tough one and, and, and strange for me as well. Uh, okay. But I, I, uh, from what I understand, Norway is uh, now on, uh, on the full rights of a partner country, which means that most probably uh, you will have to find four different leading organizations to in order to get four uh, different volunteers from four, four different countries. But what you can do is you can discuss it uh, again with, the, um, with your national agency, because despite the fact that you are not the part of the European Solidarity Corps program as a program country, you have a national agency. And there are people who are uh, much more into those uh, details of, of your status as a country than I am and they will tell you exactly how, how it needs to be done so that you have your four volunteers in your project. Thank you. Okay, so we have a question from Georgi and also two more questions in the chat. And uh, the time is actually out, but if you are okay, we can uh, stay a bit longer. So There's I'm okay. Idea. Yeah, <laughs> okay. So Georgi, your question. Yeah. Thank you for the presentation. <clears throat> I have a question regarding this um, strategic uh, projects. I mean, um, how can we motivate them to do the projects with the partner countries? And um, what I notice that the tendency is that the number of the uh, volunteering projects, uh, European Solidarity Corps projects in, in the region are decreasing. Of course, the pandemic also plays a role, but <clears throat> I think this is a general tendency. And I wanted to ask if there's any like uh, measures to motivate this cooperation with the region. Well, again, uh, I can speak only from my experience uh, and my experience is uh, this. Uh, there are two, two groups of the volunteers, meaning gro pro uh, program country volunteers uh, coming, for example, to, to cooperating with Polish organizations and the partner country organizations cooperating with Polish organizations. This is somehow in, uh, in balance. When the numbers, uh, when the numbers uh, of the program country, so to say, projects decrease, and uh, this is case, uh, the case in Poland uh, right now, uh, automatically, the Polish Polish organizations are are uh, more interested in uh, involving as many organizations from par partner countries to the projects because other uh, otherwise the projects would would not be able to to happen. Uh, there are uh, many many reasons for it, and I I'm sure we will not solve uh, this uh, this problem uh, by any kind of immediate action. What uh, 
needs to be uh, needs to be done is uh, is put more effort from the uh, national agencies side and uh, also salto uh, we do it together uh, to uh, show the both both sides that this kind of cooperation is still uh, interesting exotic and uh, because yes you are an exotic region for many people uh, and uh, also safe uh, regarding uh, political uh, events and and uh, actual uh, events that had happened and still take place in, uh, in some countries of the region um, this makes the whole region being perceived as less safe than, than it was before. For example, this is very, very, very uh, of course, um, uh, this is not a uh, not, not fair statement, but it is something that I also uh, hear from volunteers that, uh, for example, Ukraine is now perceived by many young people simply as a country that uh, has a war going on. And they don't, uh, they don't really see it where, where this, uh, where this war is and uh, the other very, very large regions that are completely safe. But for them, the simplification says that, uh, that uh, uh, the country is not safe at all. And uh, the same uh, situation we had currently with uh, Armenia, uh, even though it had happened uh, during the COVID pandemics where the, the borders were closed anyway. So I presume there are some facts that we cannot really fight, but what, what we can do is, is uh, to make sure to pass the information and to, to, to you know, uh, to have as many of uh, representatives of uh, program uh, partner countries on the international trainings and the events so that you can talk directly and, and just uh, try to, to, to fix something that is also kind of broken for, for many different re reasons and on many, many levels. Okay, so uh, questions from the chat. Yeah, where did we stop? Uh, from Dana. If short-term team volunteering project takes par, uh, takes place in partner country, can it, uh, can it include participants from this host country or only participants from program countries? I will have to double check the program guide, but to my knowledge, uh, it uh, it is possible, and it also I uh, we had this type of, types of projects that we had a short term uh, team volunteering in the Ukraine, and there were a large number of foreign uh, volunteers, but there was also a small number of Ukrainian, uh, so to say, in country volunteers in this activity. So I would say yes, this is possible. Okay, then another question. Short-term volunteering uh, raises so many questions. Uh, I'm really happy to see it because uh, normally in the projects we don't see so many short-term volunteering activities. Uh, short-term individual volunteering concentra concentrates of, on people with obstacles, but we can say the same for the long-term one, right? Long-term individual volunteering. Well, well, long-term activities are those regular activities. As you know, the European Solidarity Corps program, on the contrary, for example, to Erasmus+, Plus, this program doesn't require from the volunteer any certain level or profile of education. So we, my starting point to answering this question would be saying that this program is open generally for people with... Uh, with different backgrounds and also uh, not being very very successful in the um, in the field of formal education, uh, and uh, then having said that, the long term activities are just uh, just the starting point, the basis uh, that is open and should be open to anybody. But then again, we have this addition of the short term volunteering for young people with fewer opportunities. Uh, designed in this way because uh, sometimes those young people are not really able to travel away for this kind of long period time, more than two months, 
for very different reasons, many different reasons. Or maybe they are simply afraid because they have never left their country before. So I would say uh, the philosophy behind the program is to make all the activities open for the, uh, for the people with different obstacles. But this on, on, on the program, there's, there is this cap of, uh, of uh, short-term activities, who, which is designed precisely and only for this type of young people. Does this answer your question? Oh my yes, gosh. Yes. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. And six more messages. Oh, please share the record. Okay, this, this is not a question. It will be shared. Yes, there is information mm -hmm. below. Uh, so, uh, one more question from Dana, I guess. It's a short time after the guide was launched and before the 28th deadline. It seems like only few organizations from the program countries will be able to get the lead role. Will it be possible to apply for the projects on this deadline and get the QL for lead, lead role later, but still before the project and mobility starts? Actually, there is a bonus for this, uh, for this uh, May deadline from the commission because they are pretty much aware that uh, they started quite late. Uh, and the bonus uh, is that uh, it is enough for this the particular deadline for the organization to apply for the lead role. They don't have to get it granted from national agency. This is enough if they, uh, if they uh, send the application. And then after they send the application requesting the QL for leading, uh, they can almost immediately uh, apply for money. And then the process goes. And of course, the money is granted on the condition that they get this lead uh, quality label. All right, and the last message uh, from Oksana. Ah, oh, here it is. <laughs> Are there any changes in the process of sending receiving volunteers due to the pandemics? Uh, well, uh, as a matter of fact, the program guide does not con contain this kind of changes and it will, it most probably never will because uh, I would say it uh, differs very strongly from uh, uh, country to country. So uh, it's, it would be next to impossible to, to set up uh, some, some rules or some, uh, some um, procedures that would be, would be uh, applicable to every, uh, every country. Uh, there are some budgetary uh, elements uh, that allow you to uh, also cover, uh, cover costs related to COVID testing and the vaccinations and the medical certificates, wh uh, whether you need them for your activities, but uh, generally as uh, as a topic, as a part of the program, uh, COVID is not present in the, in the program guide. So it, uh, it gives you the possibility to also flexibly, flexibly um, react to the changing reality in your countries and also in the countries of your partners. Uh, and I would like it to stay that way because I want to COVID be soon only a bitter memory and not something that we have to struggle with on a daily basis. Uh, all right, the question, Georgi, uh, your hand is raised and I'm not sure if it's, it was about the question you asked or you have something more to ask. I'm sorry, I will, I will put it down. Okay, okay. Yeah, so uh, last questions from the chat and we really need to stop here because uh, we will start uh, the second round soon. Mm. All right. Uh, all right, it's about Russia. Russia is now in Project Guide not uh, on the same level as other Eastern European countries. Does this have practical consequences? I will uh, leave this question to, to, to be answered maybe by the SALTO colleagues uh, later on. Uh, I know that you have a plenary uh, because uh, we have, uh, I would say, I'm not sure how it will be done. And I also have very few examples of uh, uh, cooperations with uh, cooperation with Russia uh, in terms of our beneficiaries, I mean, our in Poland. So this is something that is uh, definitely uh, will have some influence, but, uh, but I'm here not in a position to say how, exact, uh, how exactly the, it will happen and what it means. 
Yeah, but we can discuss this question later with our colleagues from Russia and also with the representatives of uh, the info center from Russia. I think they have more information to tell us. Yes, all right. And the last question from Svetlana. Will it be possible for the organizations from par partner countries to have a role of leading organizations? Uh, as for now, I'd say no. I know that there is this issue of, uh, of the organizations coordinating uh, smaller organizations under them. And this is the thing that is ever present since 2012, I think, because this was the year when the uh, uh, not quality label, but accreditation for coordinating status uh, has been introduced. Uh, but uh, technically, and uh, during the, uh, it will not be, uh, to put it differently, quality label for lead organization is now for, foreseen only for organizations from program country, because it's linked directly to the possibility of applying for uh, money, uh, from national ed agencies and apply for money can only this organization who has a national agency in their country. 